Okay, so we are going to discuss now parallel connections of resistors or of any other devices, not necessarily just for resistors. So um, a connection is called in parallel when uh, the when two devices are connected in parallel means that their two ends, their two contacts are connected together, like. Um, this first, um, this first uh, circuits here, circuit diagrams, represent different ways that we can draw parallel connection of three devices. So it could be this um, in this configuration or in this configuration. They are both correct, and they are both they both show a parallel connection. Usually this configuration is given when uh, this uh, group of three resistors in parallel is connected to uh, some part of a bigger circuit. But if they, the three resistors are connected all by themselves and nothing else, usually very often we draw it this way. Whatever we, we, no matter how we draw the circuit in the parallel connection, we need to understand it as, um, as if each of these resistors is connected on its own to a battery. So here I have this little drawing of how a, a more realistic circuit would look like. You see here there is a bulb, this B1, this B1, and it's connected to a battery of two cells here. I want you to see that, okay, here is the, where the, the terminals of the battery are connected and across these two terminals is connected a bulb B1. So we have one circuit, in other words, with this battery and the bulb B1. And to the same battery, we connect a second bulb B2, here the outer wires. And uh, what does it represent? It means that a parallel connection of two, bulb is, of two bulbs is like connecting each of these bulbs separately in their own, by an, uh, by their own circuit to the same battery. So it is like um, one battery supplies two separate independent circuits. I hope you understand this uh, diag diagram here by this um, connection of these two bulbs in parallel. To, um, in parallel, in other words, two bulbs connected in parallel means that they are connected to the same battery and work in parallel to one another, not because we draw them in parallel. It's because they work in parallel. They, they, they are connected, each one is connected by its own circuit to the same battery. So in effect, like uh, this circuit here in the middle, the way a circuit diagram of this sort represents that we have three independent circuits, this one, the first loop, then we have the second loop, and then a third loop, independent loops connected to the same battery. So, um, yeah, here again, um, it's the same drawing of three separate loops generally, uh, could represent the connection of three resistors in general. Um, connected to the same battery. Here we had three, uh, two bulbs, here we have three resistors. So each one um, corresponds to one loop. One loop is a separate independent circuit that, is, that happens to be connected to the same battery. So one battery supplies here three circuits and I keep on repeating it because it's so important to understand the parallel connection in this way because if we understand it in this way we can understand what happens to the current and the potential difference and the resistance um, in a circuit and we can uh, make correct predictions and and this in contrast to what we see in most of the books that say oh the current uh, starts from the battery and moves around and passes from one uh, resistor and then comes out of the resistor and goes into another resistor. This is not a good way to understand the circuit. The currents don't start at the batteries and they don't move in the, in the circuit. So current is a rate of flow of charge, isn't it? It does not start and doesn't, it is not produced by, by a battery. So, but if we understand that um, 
in this case that the battery here supplies three independent circuits. Um, oh, by the way, last week, you remember I showed you a little um, uh, setup with uh, three bulbs and we saw that if we removed one bulb from um, the parallel connection, the, the brightness of the other bulbs did not change. So it, it indicates, in other words, that uh, the other bulbs are connected independently to the same battery. So that is why they are not affected if you remove one or if you add an extra one in parallel. Okay, so that's enough with this page. Let's go to the next page now and discuss some nitty gritty of uh, parallel connections, like what happens to the potential difference across each device and what happens to the currents and so on. So let us start uh, by discussing, by thinking of the potential difference across parallel connections. What happens here? We have an, a parallel connection of three resistors. And uh, since, since we are going to understand that each of these resistors is connected independently in its own loop to our battery, obviously the potential difference across each of them will be the potential difference across the terminals of the battery. Yeah? Well, for, for simplicity, we assume that the battery does not have internal resistance or anything. So if we connect each of these independently um, across the terminals of the same battery, obviously the potential difference across each of them will be the same potential difference, will be the potential difference of the battery, isn't it, supplied by the battery. So the potential difference across is uh, V, which is the potential difference supplied by the battery. If, we, if, the, if our battery is made out of two cells, obviously the, well, in theory, the, the, the potential difference then would be three volts in theory. So each, uh, the potential difference across each of these resistors here would be also three volts. So in other words, these three points here that we have in this configuration, in this way that we draw a parallel connection, are actually the same, represent the same point of, of the circuit. So this represents the same point. That is why we could draw this circuit like that. Um, where can I draw it? I can draw it down here. So if these are the same point, it's like having three resistors all uh, say these are the three resistors. So this this point here is common to all these three resistors and all these um, yeah. And these points are connected to the to the battery. That is why, because those three points are at the same potential, they they represent the same point as if they were touching one another. We can also draw it in this configuration um, this way, uh, parallel connection. And um, again, uh, yeah, we well, have this diagram here, this little drawing says it's the same, like this one to remind us that each of these resistors is connected in its own loop to the same, to the same battery. So I hope this makes sense why the potential difference across um, each of these resistors in the parallel connection is the same as that of the of our source, the battery. Mm -hmm. Now, okay, now let's see about the current. The current in the parallel in the parallel circuit. Now it's more important, important to understand the parallel connection as separate loops connected to the same battery. Okay. Now, if if we assume that these uh, three resistors are identical. Obviously, and if we think of these uh, resistors connected independently to the same battery, obviously the current in each of these loops will be the same, isn't it? If, we, if these resistors are identical, they have the same resistance connected to the same battery, obviously the current, the currents, these three currents in each um, resistor will be exactly the same. So this I1 would be equal to the current I2 equal to the current I3. And, um, but now if we, um, if we consider this, this part here where, 
which, um, which connects, let's, let's go to this uh, drawing. This, this part here of the, the, the circuit, this circuit, it's like common to all the three, bar, uh, the three resistors. So in this part here, which is common, which we can call it the main branch, perhaps, the main branch, the branch that contains the battery, this, the current in this main branch is the current of all, uh, I mean, the currents of all of these resistors are also part of this branch, isn't it? So this total current, this total current which exists in this branch is actually the current which is I1 plus I2 plus I3, all the three currents together. And uh, therefore the total current, the total current in the parallel connection, when we say total, total current is the current in the main branch, eh? the current that is also in the battery. This total current, uh, total current is actually the sum of the currents that exist in each, uh, of uh, the devices that we have connected in parallel. I1 plus I2 plus I3, and we said if these devices were identical, then those currents would be also identical, so the current would be altogether three times um, I, if I was the current in each of these uh, resistors. So this is now very important that the total current in a parallel connection in other words, the total, the current in the main branch is the sum of all the currents in the individual uh, devices. And if we had four, we would we, have an extra current. If we had only two devices in parallel, we would only have, we we would only have two currents added added here. Which means the more the more devices we add in parallel, if we keep on adding here devices in parallel, the total current becomes bigger and bigger and, and bigger. And this eventually becomes quite dangerous because um, the bigger the current, the hotter the, the wires here in the main branch will end up, uh, will become. And um, uh, if they become too hot, uh, well, they, they might, we might start a fire there, isn't it? they can become too hot. And that is the reason why we have um, uh, fuses or other devices, especially to protect our circuits from very high currents. And, uh, and now that we talk about fuses and so on, perhaps it's time to say that the connections at home, not just at home, any connection um, in the in the power grid in our cities um, are all connected in parallel. Why are they connected in parallel? Simply because each device is like connected independently to, to our source, the, the, main, of the main source in our home. Because when uh, we remove one device or if one device gets damaged or we switch off a light, in one room or if we switch off um, the cattle or switch on something. The other devices are not affected and uh, simply because they are in parallel, connected in parallel. Everything is in parallel so that they do not, affect, do not become affected every time we switch on or off some other devices um, at home or lights in the kitchen or rooms, bedrooms and so on. So each device is, can be operated separately without affecting anything else. And uh, this, uh, not, uh, not only the, um, the wiring at home linking all the rooms, the, the electricity supply to all the rooms and so on, but even the plugs, the, um, the wall sockets, uh, whatever we connect in a wall socket is um, connected in parallel. So if you have a wall socket uh, in the kitchen, for example, and um, if you want to connect many devices in the same wall socket, obviously we use this um, uh, multi, uh, multi plugs, something like that, isn't it? If, but every time we connect an extra device here, like a kettle or a toaster or a, I don't know, some beaker or something, they are connected in parallel. And uh, that is why it's not a good idea to connect, to plug too many things in the same, the same wall socket, eh? because eventually the too much current in the wires behind the wall socket might, might end up uh, heating up the cables 
to an extent that uh, to the, the, that can become dangerous. Eh? It can start a fire. But um, anyway, we can discuss more of that when we talk about dangers about electricity or related to electricity and the safe use of electricity. But now let us uh, come back now to this parallel connection. So we said that two important aspects now, the parallel connections, is that the voltage across um, potential difference across devices is the same, the parallel connection. And, and another important aspect is that the total current, the total current in the main branch, that, uh, um, which is the current from the power supply, uh, is uh, the sum of all the currents in uh, each uh, parallel connection, in each device which is connected in parallel. And uh, which means a very important aspect is that some people think that a battery or a power supply supplies a particular current. This is not true. The, the wall socket or the batteries, the power supplies at, at school, they do not supply, they supply a particular potential difference, but not a particular current. The current changes depending on how many devices we have connected and how we have connected them. If we add devices in parallel to our power source, the current increases. If we add devices in series, as we saw last week, the current decreases, drops. So the current is not uh, something standard produced by the power source, eh? it's not. So the current always um, depends on what we have uh, connected and how we have connected. So I hope these things make sense to you because, what is this now, it's about the current. Now, one other aspect that we need to discuss is what happens to the resistance, the effective resistance in the circuit, now that we know what happens with the potential differences in the currents. So uh, let us assume that we have a parallel connection with a number of resistors in parallel. In order for us to uh, to figure out what can be uh, the effective resistance of such a parallel connection and, and by effective resistance we mean um, a resistance, perhaps an imaginary resistance, that we could, could replace all of these uh, devices uh, by a single resistance that, or device that would have this effective resistance. So how can we start? We start with the fact that uh, the total current of a parallel connection is the sum of the currents in each individual uh, resistor or whatever uh, res resistance we have connected there. So we can start from there that the total current, the total current is equal to the different currents that we have connected, I1 plus I2 plus plus whatever, how plus IN to make it general, in general. So the total current is the sum of the individual currents. So now uh, we can uh, replace the current by using Ohm's law with um, what is uh, the current in general is uh, the potential difference divided by the resistance. The current in the resistor is equal to the potential difference across this resistor divided by its resistance in general. So we are going to apply this formula here for each individual resistor that we have connected here and also we are going to apply it to the total to the total current here because we can apply it either uh, Ohm's law we can apply it to particular devices or we can apply it to the whole circuit at the same um, as a whole. So here this represents the, the total circuit, the current in the, the total current. So this would be the total voltage divided by the total resistance or effective resistance of the circuit that we need to find actually. Now the total uh, voltage or the total potential difference represents here the potential difference applied by the battery, this V. 
And this V, we said it's common to all of these resistors, so there's no need to say V1 or V2 or V total. It's the same because it's a parallel connection. And this now, uh, now we are going to apply Ohm's law to each individual uh, resistor. And uh, for the first, this current I1 corresponds to this resistor R1 here. So this would be the potential difference across this resistor R1 divided by its resistance, which is R1 in this case. Next to, to the second resistor, the voltage across R2 is also V and the resistance of this resistor is R2 and so on and so forth until we end, uh, get to the last resistor, which will have a potential difference V and resistance are N, say. So because now the potential difference here is common factor, we can write this as V, and inside the parentheses, we can have the remaining factors which, which only contain resistances, one over Rn is the last one. And you see now uh, this, uh, oops, this, all this part here is equal to this, uh, to this factor here that re, um, refers to the total circuit. Okay. And as we can see now here, now the V, so we can cancel. And what do we have left? We have an expression that um, involves only the, the total resistance here, let's write it here, oh, let's write it up there. One over R total, so what remains then, is equal to one over R1 plus one over R2 plus etc. plus one over Rn. So here is an expression that, that links the total resistance or the effective resistance of a parallel connection with the individual resistors here, resistances of the individual resistors. And um, this is um, the expression that we can use to calculate the effective resistance of a circuit if we know the individual resistances of the devices that are connected in parallel. So this one, uh, um, it must be said, has more work than uh, the, the effective resistance of a series connection, but nevertheless we have a, a mathematical expression that we can use in general and uh, maybe we can do a little problem here that we can apply this. Okay, here. that's an easy problem. It's also in the in the site, in the lesson that concerns the, uh, concerns the resistors in parallel. Eh? So here we have three little examples with uh, th uh, three connections of three resistors in parallel. And if you, if you can see, let me make it bigger. The resistances of these resistors are equal. Let's make it even bigger. I hope you can see this clearly. Here we have three resistors in parallel and each one has a resistance of six ohms. And here's the solution of, um, so here's for the six ohm, yeah. So if we apply, you see this, this formula that we just uh, worked out for the, the, um, the effective resistance. So we have, uh, if we replace the R1, R2, and R3, that should be R3 there, not R2. With the, value, the values, they're all six ohms, all of them are six ohms, one over six ohms plus one over six plus one over six. What do we have? Um, overall that gives us three over six ohms and therefore so what we have one over the effective or equivalent resistance is I'm writing this one is three over six ohms and which means from here we must this is very easy to to make a mistake here we have to invert to take the inverse eh, to find the, the actual equivalent resistance <laughs> we must never we must not forget to to inverse the these ratios here and this gives us actually two ohms because six over three is two ohms 
And um, if we do the same for the next um, little diagram, which is uh, the, where the resistors are nine ohms each, we find that the equivalent resistance is three ohms. So for that was two, the next is three. The, in the last one, where each resistance here is 12 ohms, we find that the equivalent is four ohms. And I want you to, to see if you can see this pattern that happens here. Um, when the, in the case of uh, like these ones, where the resistors are equal, the parallel connection of resistors, of resistances which are equal, we can uh, derive like a general formula, uh, which is here, that the equivalent resistance of equal resistors in parallel is given by R over N, where N is the number of resistors. So in our case, the number of resistors connected in parallel was three. So the equivalent resistance we saw was R over N in general. N in this case was three. Yeah? So in this case, in the first example, the, the each resistance was six ohm. So six ohms divided by three and gave us gave us two ohms here in this case. In the next uh, example, our R resistance of one resistor was nine ohms. So that would be nine ohms divided by three and gave us three ohms, which was this value. And in the last case, each resistance was 12 ohms. So 12 ohms divided by three gave, the, gave us four ohms. So in other words, this, uh, this is a nice little trick, if you remember, to find the resistance straight away without having to go through all these calculations. Uh, because you save time, in other words. If you cannot remember this uh, formula, it is not the end of the world at all. You simply apply the, the, normal, the normal formula for resistors in parallel, and we need to, and we find the equivalent resistance. And we need to remember at the end to, to inverse this uh, one over R equivalent because it, it's very easy to make a mistake and forget that we, you need to reverse to find the correct value of resistance. So, and the, but the, in general, if the resistances of a parallel connections have different values, of course, we have to apply this formula. But always another nice thing to remember is that the, the equivalent resistance, the effective resistance overall, is always smaller, has a smaller value than the smallest value of the resistors which are connected in parallel. So it has always the smallest value than the smallest, the smallest resistance from our combination of parallel resistors. Like we have a, like here for example, we have a parallel connection of different, uh, of uh, unequal resistors. W which one is the smallest resistor here? Is this one, the four ohms. Uh, if we do the calculations, we are going to find an effective resistance or equivalent resistance or total resistance, whatever its name is. This resistance will be less, less than the four ohms. And uh, hold it, I'm not sure I should have this value here. Where is this? I don't know. Uh, let me find my notes. Which is, yeah, two comma twenty six. I find I find that the, the the equivalent resistance here is two comma twenty six ohms. You see, it's less than four ohms. So it's nice to remember this little rule here. It's not a rule. It's just um, interesting to remember. It's a way to check our calculations also, isn't it? So. I think this is enough now for the parallel connections. And uh, next week we'll try to, to make some predictions in parallel and series circuits. Okay. Okay, guys, I hope this makes sense to you. Um, and of course, if you have any problems, you can always ask me next week. Eh? Or, yeah. The time is gone as usual. So guys, thank you for being here again and uh, enjoy your weekend. Have a lovely weekend and 
see you next week. Eh?